Like many applications, there are certain values that we just cannot hard code if we want to deploy our application to production. So for instance, there might be some values that we load in development mode, but other values that we load in production mode. However, .NET MAUI does not have great built-in support for loading certain values based on environments. So for instance, in our .NET MAUI application bug porter, we have keys and URLs that are hard-coded in our application, such as the base URL to our API. So in development mode, we might point to our local host URL on our local machine, but in production, we want to point to our live production Azure function. Now in the .NET ecosystem, specifically in ASP.NET, the common way to do this is to have app settings files per environment, and the framework will just load those configuration values by default. However, .NET MAUI does not have built-in support for automatically loading values from app settings files. And although maybe we could just hard code the values and then swap them out in code at runtime, it's much easier to declare configuration values in a declarative configuration file, such as the app settings.json. So let's integrate app settings.json files per environment into bug porter our .NET MAUI application. So first we want to have general support for loading app settings configuration files. And then we want to take it a step further to load configuration files per environment. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do, of course, is define an app settings.json. So let's add a new file in our .NET MAUI project. Let's search for JSON. And we just want a JavaScript JSON configuration file. And we'll call this app settings.json and create. Let's clear out this boilerplate. And for now, we'll just demonstrate with one value. So most importantly, we want to load this base URL for our API from our app settings.json. So we're going to define the bug porter API base URL and point that to localhost. And now let's head back to our MAUI program and load up this app settings.json. Now I wanted to find a custom extension method on this MAUI app builder to automatically register our app settings configuration. So let's demonstrate how that'll look. So we're going to call our builder and add app settings. So this will be a custom extension method. And for now, we can just throw that down here. So underneath our create Maui app startup method, we'll define our extension method, which needs to be static. And we want to extend the Maui app builder. So we're prefixing this with this to mark it as an extension method for the Maui app builder. And now to load our app settings.json file, I'm going to use a technique that James Montemagno popularized. He wrote a blog post on it. Works great. I'll leave a link to that blog post below if you want to check it out yourself. But just wanted to give a shout out to James here. So that technique, we're going to take our current assembly with git executing assembly, and we want to git manifest resource stream and point to our app settings.json file within our application's namespace. So our namespace is bugporter.client, and we're just pointing to our app settings.json. Now, if we want to load this app settings.json with git manifest resource stream, we're going to have to configure our app settings.json properties. And we want this to build as an embedded resource. So we'll select that. And we want to copy this to the output directory. We'll how about just copy always. Why not? And that should be good. So let's get this stream, mark it with using so that we dispose it. So now we're streaming in our app settings.json. But if we want to register this JSON stream in our MAUI configuration, we're going to need a couple packages. So let's go to manage NuGet packages. And first off, we want Microsoft.extensions.configuration.json. Let's install that. So now if we successfully loaded this app settings.json and our stream is not null, then we can instantiate a new configuration builder. And with this, we can add our JSON stream using that package that we just installed. So we're registering our app settings.json stream with this configuration builder. Let's build the configuration. And finally, we can take that configuration and add it to our Maui app builder configuration. So now let's head back up to where we want to read these values and test this out. So we want to get our bug porter API base URL and pass that to our HTTP client. And we can take our builder configuration now since we added app settings. And we want to get a value from there and we want to get our bug porter API base URL, which we registered in our app settings.json. But we can't just call git value like we can in ASP.NET, for example, by default. We're going to need a package for that. So let's manage NuGet packages. And we want Microsoft.extensions.configuration.binder. Let's install that. Sweet. And there we go. Git value works as we expected. And placing a breakpoint. Taking a look, our configuration value was loaded successfully. 
So let's pass that value to our HTTP client. And I'll go ahead and move these other configuration values to our app settings.json as well, real quick. There we go, loading the Firebase API key and Firebase alt domain, passing those in, and we define those in the app settings.json. Let's commit all these changes and close out the issue and move on to the next issue. Let's load values per environment. So for instance, I want to have an app settings.development.json as well as an app settings.production.json. And really the only difference between development and production is this bug portal API base URL. So let's remove this from our default app settings.json that's environment agnostic. And for app settings.development.json, we are going to load this single base URL. And we can remove these Firebase ones because those are going to be handled by the base app settings.json file. So in development, we're going to load all these values as well as this additional base URL that points to localhost. And in production, we'll load the Firebase values from our base configuration, but our base URL is going to point to our Azure function. So now we just need to load either the development file or the production file based on our environment. So to do this, let's actually extract all of this within add app settings to its own extension method. And we'll call this add JSON settings. Whoops, that is not how I wanted this to be exported. So let's change this. We want it to be an extension method, not pass in the builder, but extend it. And I don't want to stream returns. Let's just make this void, remove the return, and add the using back to the stream. And the reason we extracted this to its own extension method is because this one is going to take the name of the app settings file that we want to load. So we'll just take the file name and do some string interpolation here and pass in the file name. So if we pass in app settings.json, it'll load that file. If we pass in app settings.development.json, it'll load and add that file to the configuration. So by default, all the time, we always want to add app settings.json but per environment for example in development we want to add the development.json in production we want to add production.json now unfortunately there's not really a smart way to differentiate between development and production and it might not make sense to rely on environment variables for a desktop application that runs on another user's computer so instead we'll leverage good old preprocessor directives so if we're running our application in debug mode, we'll add the development.json. And if we're not running the application in debug mode, then we'll add the production.json. So if we switch this over to release mode, as you can see, this will get highlighted and this will get grayed out once it switches. There we go. So all we need to do here is make sure that when we build our application for production, we build it in release mode, as we should be doing anyways. But testing this out in debug mode, let's see if we load the development base URL, which we do. Hooray! Let's commit these changes for loading app settings JSON files per environment. Let's close out the corresponding issue, complete the sprint. Sweet! But just to summarize, we added app settings files for different configuration values in our application. And then we used a technique popularized by James Montemagno to load app settings JSON files into our Maui configuration. And then we took it a step further to load app settings files per environment. So hopefully you can apply these concepts to your own .NET Maui application to declaratively manage configuration values per environment.